What if it was possible to have local fresh groceries delivered right to your door? Think of all the free time you'd have. Well, Instacart gives unlimited grocery delivery for one low monthly fee. Forgot that special ingredient in your favorite dish? Instacart can deliver it to your front door in as fast as one hour. You can shop multiple stores, see deals in your area, and save time and money. I've been using Instacart for over three years. I started using them in Arizona, and I'm using them here in Florida. I love the time-saving convenience. They pick the freshest products, and they keep my eggs safe, too. To receive your first delivery free, follow the link in the show notes so that Instacart knows that we sent you and to help support the show. Instacart, never step foot in a grocery store again. Welcome to Empowered Within, a soul-quenching, transformational podcast that will set your soul on fire through candid and inspiring conversations Leading experts, celebrities, healers, and I share our journeys of how we've overcome challenges to living an empowered life from within. I'm your host, Jennifer Pilates. Welcome to another episode of Empowered Within. Hi there. I am so excited for today's show. We are discussing the power of numerology for entrepreneurs. We have with us our official registered numerologist and my dear friend, Felicia Bender. Felicia is the author of Redesign Your Life Using Numerology to Create the Wildly Optimal You, as well as Master Numbers 1122 33, The Ultimate Guide. Felicia is also the resident numerologist of astrostyle.com and is featured in many media outlets, including Refinery29, Women's Health, and Elephant Journal. Welcome, Felicia. Oh, I'm excited to be here today. It's always exciting to, to meet with you, Jen, but, but we're going to be talking numbers again today. So Numbers. Please. We're making friends with numbers. And you've really turned me on to some really cool information that I never thought about looking at how numerology with your business name and business in general and really getting things to flow and are you in the flow and how numerology can really bring that out. Before we dive too much into all of that, will you, for our listeners who are maybe new and haven't heard our other, I don't know, handful of episodes on the podcast here, just share a little brief introduction to what numerology is before we dive into all our goodies today? Absolutely, because numerology is the art and science of numbers. It comes, the kind I practice comes from Pythagoras. I don't know, he's, if you were paying attention in math class, I always say this, but the Pythagorean theorem of geometry, same guy, okay? Same guy who you were like, oh, people are like, no, I'm not a mathematician. And I also want to say, I am not either. So if you're a little hesitant about numerology, it really isn't math, it's a language. So hang on, okay? Stick with us. And yet numerology itself posits the idea that numbers carry with them not only a counting value, like a quantitative value, one apple, two apples, and so on, how we count things, that numbers carry with them data. They carry information. It's vibration. It's frequency. It's a container for, for this influence and for the information. And so it's a little bit like, okay, well, I've got to stretch my imagination to even think that could be operational. And yet, if we really step back and look, willingly suspend our disbelief, we can see that in our technological world, everything is numbers. All of our computerized data stuff is ones and zeros. And we think about your cell phone. We have a phone number. And it connects us <laughs> to people all over the globe. So it, it, if we really stop and think, that's really quite uh, freaky. It's a little bit of a miracle that can happen. So numerology really is, it rides that wave in terms of whenever numbers show up, they are carrying data and they're carrying information. So I always like to also say it's like walking into a room where there is Morse code going off. And if you do not know Morse code, it's just static, right? It's you walk on through. And yet if Morse code, you will stand there and you can actually understand the information that is being relayed. So it's the same sort of thing with numerology. Once you begin to understand numbers and what their, what their defining qualities are, what messages they bring, what, whenever they show up, it's a whole new world of information that can open up for us. Yeah, it truly is. And you've brought me into being a numbers lover 
Whereas before, and I didn't realize I was, I pay attention to numbers that are around me, messages from the angels and from the universe. Once you have really opened up my perspective to understanding my name, understanding so much more, it's just been eye-opening. It's just another way to have a different style reading, if you will. For those Absolutely. that like an intuitive reading or an astrological reading, a numerology reading, and what's so cool, it's it's just so spot on. It's just unbelievable. And I know I've said this like every episode that we're in together, but it truly is. What are the benefits that you have found with numerology and entrepreneurship? Gosh, a lot. <laughs> so let's start with simply having a framework that numerology can offer all of us around who we are, what our soul's lessons are, what our pathway is, what our skills and talents, what our life's purpose is. And because with numerology, we will use your full name as it appears on your birth certificate. And we'll also do some calculations for your current name to see how that plays in. It's like an overlay of energy to the foundational energy that is always present with your full name at birth. And then we'll look at the date of birth. And with all with that information, we can run numerologically chart, like an astrological chart in many ways. So we have your life path, which is like your sun sign. It tells you and shows you what your life's purpose is, what you checked in to do. <laughs> And it'll also point to some of the tendencies, the obstacles that we might have as well when we go through life. Those are worth the price of admission because why put our energy and emphasis somewhere that's our weak link? It's really good to know that. So entrepreneurial, as an entrepreneur at neural person, that is a really good thing to know. We can also look at your expression number. It's called the destiny number. Also in numerology, this is taken from your name. And this is like your rising sign in astrology. And it offers you some really great focus points about what you would be really good at in a career and for work and that sort of thing. And then we have a soul urge, what drives you from a soul level and what you really want and need to feel that most sense of satisfaction. And then your birthday number, your the day that you were born offers you some really tried and true skills and talents that you feel very comfortable with usually. And then your personality, how people see you. So then we can, we put that all together and we can really see how to focus on for instance, say you're a person who you're like, wow, I really want to start a business, but I've got three ideas and I can't decide which one. And you'd be surprised how many people are like this. Maybe you wouldn't, yeah. you know, maybe because you're a multipreneur as mm -hmm. well, you know, in that way. And so we can, we could sit down and look at your numbers and go, all three of these are fine and dandy, but which numerologically we can really key into what one, which one of them really speaks to your talents and moreover speaks to why you're here. Like, mm. why were you even born and yeah. put on this planet? And I think honestly, right now, Jennifer, not to get too, I don't know, corny about it, but I think that I am seeing so many of my clients, so many of my just friends in my personal life, really at this, I would just say it's a kind of a spiritual crisis point where people are really after these several years of whatever we've gone through transitionally, people are really seeking something that speaks to them on a deeper level. They don't want to be wasting their time doing doing stuff that they don't want to be doing. And right. so to really dig into your numbers allows you to do that. And then on top of that, we can look numerologically at cycles of time. Your personal year cycle is the theme to your party for each year, each calendar year that comes, comes into play. And then I also love to look at the pinnacle cycles to really get a trajectory. Those pinnacles in numerology are four chunks of time that all of us go through. And it is like the degree programs that we've signed up for an extended period of time. And they're the building blocks of our life. So we can see with a longer lens, okay, if you're doing this right now, and in three years, your pinnacle is shifting over to a three, I would say that you're, you should opt for more of the media presence because the three is about communication. It's about writing. It's about expression. It's about being on stage. It's about inspiring and motivating. So if you're on the fence about what you're doing and the numerology resonates with you, it's a really nice, clear framework to move within. 
I love the different aspect of being able to find what a lot of people will term as your zone of genius. Yes. What are you really good at? What sets your soul on fire? And honestly, if you can work with Felicia and plug out the numbers and she can go, oh, here's A, B, and C, what really lights you up? Meanwhile, Mm -hmm. you've taken 12 courses, you've gone to four workshops, you've done this, you've spent thousands of dollars for someone to try to help you find your zone of genius. And here, Felicia, she's just going to pull out the numbers and do it for you. And guide you. That's amazing. And yeah, what I love about that. I'm just the that, translator, which is great. Totally. <laughs> just yeah. simplifies the process. Like it shouldn't be that hard. And I agree with you. There are so many people where I have working with clients that are looking for where do I belong? Ge- geographically speaking, work-wise, relationship-wise, everybody feels this something needs to change, something needs to give. Where am I going? What am I doing? And everyone is grasping. Mm-hmm. It feels like very much so it. Who can help me? What can he, you know, because they're like burnt out. They're burnt out on taking workshops and challenges and one more module and one more. I get it. I get that it's a billion dollar industry, but I also get that there is a burnout on it. And so Mm -hmm. let's bring you to the place of your zone of genius, truly based on you and then see Mm -hmm. how that resonates with you and then go take a workshop based on whatever that is or whatever you need, but you're not just fishing around in a pond not knowing where you're going next. Exactly. And the point of the numbers for me, when I work with people, I work with people on all kinds of levels and yet sometimes people come in and again, we do talk business and talk finance and it's really interesting to look at that as a framework and then also look at, ways that we can look at your business name, what vibration that holds. Because in numerology, we will take all of the letters in the alphabet and we translate those into numbers. And then we will do some addition and all of that. We won't, we obviously will not go into that right Right, now. Right, right. Yeah, well, well, I love that you call it an energetic imprint of your business. And what a different vibration just using that term brings to being an entrepreneur. Are you ready to lose inches, increase strength, and tone your body from head to toe? Are you ready for a total body, mind, and spirit transformation? I am excited to announce that I am launching my exclusive eight-week Pilates Return to Life training program. This will give you an opportunity to have a total body, mind, and spirit transformation of health and wellness to a new lifestyle. Imagine in seven days, you will feel a difference. In 14 days, you will see a difference. And in eight weeks, you will have your new Pilates body. So what do you say? Want to join me on the mat? Head over to jenniferpilates.com today. Space is limited. Use a special promo code EW and the word special, EW special special to receive $200 off while space is available. Head on over to jenniferpilates.com and I'll see you on the mat. Yes. And because we all know, we all know when we look at a product for a product and we're like, Oh, that name sucks, whatever. And sometimes we can just, we can extract why it feels so off from the numerology. Sometimes if you are, if your business is a coaching business, say where you want to coach couple, it's relationship counseling that you want to do. And your business happens to, you know, be a six uh, in, in numerology is all about home and family. It's about counseling. It's mm-hmm. very magnetic. It's all that. So you go, Ooh, this is a really good fit for the energy that the, even just the name of my business is emanating without me even having anything yeah. to do with it. I right? find it fascinating. Absolutely fascinating because that could be like, and I know you coach clients on it too, just the one blockage that needs a shift. Yeah, that's it. You could be on your zone of genius and it's the name that needs tweaking or just a little vibration that can make such a big difference. And you have an upcoming course that's called Numerology for Entrepreneurship. And you describe how numerology can have a validating and actionable breakthrough with your business. And I'm wondering if you would be so kind as to share maybe a few examples that you've had 
within your own numerology journey, becoming the practical numerologist? That's, oh, that's a great question because yes, absolutely. When I found, we don't come to these modalities just because it's not like I'm born and go, Ooh, I want to be a numerologist. Like the, the, it reminds me of Hermie on the, um, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Remember that old cartoon for mm-hmm. Christmas time? All he wants to do is be a dentist. <laughs> You're like, oh my gosh, that's pretty, pretty amazing. But I did not grow up like Hermie wanting to be a numerologist. And so numerologically, to put it into just some simple framework here, what I love about the numbers is it also validates choices I've made experiences that I've had, the road to getting there, because oftentimes, like Eckhart Tolle would say, will say that often people attempt to, uh, you know, that the present moment is something to get past or to avoid or to just manage, just tolerate. And, but that's really, that's what makes up our life, right? It's a Yoda thing to say, but it truly is. So the numerology can put that into context because for me personally, I am a three life path. The three is that creator, the creator, the communicator, all about creative self-expression, very emotionally sensitive as well. I have always been a creative vortex as from childhood on. And one of the things about the three is that they are forever curious and always getting the next certification, doing this. It's always exploring and and doing that. And yet the key to the castle for the three is getting to a certain point and going, okay, how do I take this, what I'm really good at here. And I really like this from this thing that I've done and this and over here and over this. And now I am going to upcycle it, recycle it, reinvent and make something new and relevant to give out to others, to inspire, to motivate, to uplift. So with me, my, I have a very checkered resume as a three life path and most three life paths and you, I'm sure as a five life path are very similar. And yet I, and I, I worked from a very young age. I worked at McDonald's at a donut shop, all the things through college, I worked at a newspaper as a freelance writer. I got degrees in theater. I was an, an actor. I did a little bit in, in LA. I was a director. I have a master's and a PhD in theater. I play the drums. I, oh my I'm goodness. Music inclined. I had, all, I was like in college, I was like, Ooh, do I be, am I a theater major or music major? Theater won out, but I, all of those things, I've always loved anything art. I'm very good with design. I ended up doing real estate and doing interior design and other things with that. Then creative stuff that it's just this vortex. But when I discovered or it discovered me, numerology, it was my soul's purpose. It was that it was my tool because I'd gone through this like most people listening to your podcast right now, a pretty intense spiritual awakening or gauntlet in my early thirties, my mom died. And it really, it, as we all experience something, we don't go on these pathways. We don't seek this without pain and without something to catalyze ourselves to do that. So this is a long way around saying that when, that all of the things that I've done up until then, I can reflect on my numerology chart and get the data from there and go, wow, I've been doing it. Often you don't feel like you're doing it until you have that reflective surface. And and so now though, I can look at my cycles of time and what I'm doing within my cycles. And it is a very clear pathway that I, that I feel very intuitively. And then I can see it in front of me uh, with the numbers. And I'll just say that in, when my last transition into my final pinnacle, which is an eight, and it's more of the, it's more of getting things together business-wise, becoming an authority in your field, those sorts of things. And it's at this point that I released a third book and then I've really established my sense of myself within this, within the numerology world. And, and I feel 
qualified or credentialed enough now to really share that in a more expansive way mm -hmm. that way. I just love, love, love looking at my numbers and then being able to forecast. And it also, it gives me direction. And it gives me fuel to continue on the pathway that I know is the right one for me. Yeah, that is so amazing. And there's something else that you wrote that I read recently, and you talk about having a soul-centered purpose and to create a thriving and successful business that's an absolute alignment with what you were born to do, which is exactly what you just described. You may yes. not have known it at the time, but how validating to sit down with the numerology and go, everything makes sense now. Everything yep. the way that I feel, and maybe you were beating yourself up because you never live in one place and you never, it all would make sense with, based on your numerology, with whom you are and where you are and what personal yep. year that you're in. Like all of that stuff will validate. And I found with working with you, Felicia, that there was so much that maybe I would be down on myself for that it's no, that's just who I am. That's my creative self. That's exactly that's being in that soul centered purpose, which when we look out there in the world right now, especially, and I know that there's so much fear that's going on and fear of the unknown, fear of what we've been through, fear of what's coming, fear and people are just, everyone just hunkering down and going, what do I do? And worried about this and finances and love and relationships and am I moving? Am I not? Is the world collapsing? Oh, we're still here. Great. Oh, we're three today. But if, yes, if one can just stop and breathe and go, okay, let's just get you in alignment and you're the ripple effect, everything around you, getting to know you is the key to that soul-centered purpose and to thriving in a way that takes you through all of these, they're not even potholes, whatever this last couple of years have been, all of these crazy roller coasters that you still just get it through. Felicia, you wrote a book. You've done numerous courses during this time. I have did a podcast that I never even thought was possible, never was on my radar. So when you can get into those moments, and I think that working with Felicia and finding out that numerology, just knowing the personal year that you're in has mm -hmm. been life-changing, finding that out with Felicia the last couple of years. I feel like it's been years now. <laughs> we've been working it together. Is, it is strange. It isn't is, it? It, time is very elusive at this point. Talking about that though, Jennifer, you are in a very transitional personal year this year, mm -hmm. 2022. It's you're in the ending closing out year of your nine year cycle. And how do you feel that? I don't want to put you on the spot, yeah. but how do you feel that's coming into play for you? How is that hashing out? It <laughs> well, Felicia, <laughs> thanks for that. We'll talk no, more later. No, but no, I would say what was so helpful was because I feared the number nine year. Because if you just Google it online, like you're gonna just be like, I'm just gonna go under the covers in my bed and just wake me when it's over. And I felt that way. And mm -hmm. then Felicia and I really worked together, and she was just like, No. And then I started to realize how many different things were closing out in my life, and I didn't fight it. And I went yes. with it or how many different corners. And then I, but then I, and then I had a stigma of, but no, it's only supposed to be about an ending year. And then I realized, well, wait, with every ending is a new beginning. So while I was closing out, yes, there were new things that were coming in, but not so much until I would say I felt the forward movement really around my birthday. And, and then these last few weeks right now, there is this urge of get this done, get that done. Because like you, I've got new things coming up through the podcast, through coaching, through writing. And and there's this urgency. And I'm thinking, I wonder what this is all about. But again, it's hurry up, get yourself where you need to be so that maybe it can just explode next year. So it's been interesting. I've seen relationships that have closed out that I never thought would see close out. I've taken an empowerment and a place in life that I never thought I would where I really look at other things and go, no, that's you, not me. Exactly. So my biggest fear, a lot of fears going into this year, which let's remember is nothing more, fear is nothing more than excitement without breath. However, <laughs> so one of the things they say is maybe there could be like a death or a medical crisis. And I had this in my head and I had read something and then I'm not kidding you. So you have to be very careful of what you manifest for yourself. I read, say it was like February or so. And all of a sudden I had a heart episode out of nowhere and ended up, I drove my, I shouldn't have even driven myself to the hospital. Anyways, long story short. So I was in the hospital. It was a hot mess and I, I was not in my usual, I didn't have my usual doctors and it was so ridiculous. I was on the phone crying to my real doctors 
And what came out of it as I laid in that bed and I looked up and no lie, I, the, the telephone number to the room was 666. And I went, oh my God, <laughs> like what? And so I immediately Googled the spiritual number, the spiritual meaning of the number 666. So first of all, let's always check your angel numbers. And it was basically about a new beginning. And what this was showing me, one of my fears, which was not being with my doctors, not being at my usual hospital, like all of it culminating into this 24 hours of just heck. And I found out that my cholesterol was lower. I found out which hospital when I'm vacationing here is better than the other, what doctors are better than the others, appreciating how amazing my doctors are. There was so much that came out of it. And then to realize that, yes, I had an episode, but I lived through it. So all these fears that I had it seriously culminated in such a huge thing, even down to remember thinking, I had thought, I wonder what it would have been like when my first heart stuff happened a few years ago, if my mom had been there because she wasn't around. Guess who was there that whole 24 hours? My mom. I mean, everything played out. So when I tell you, you can manifest some stuff, boy, that closed out a lot for me. And there was a lot yeah, released. It's really interesting too, because your life path number is a five. And one of the biggest, what part of your learning curve is dealing with fear. Yeah. We all have to, and we all have to deal with fear. And yet for a five, it is on the priority pole, right? It is one of the main features. Let's put it that way. And you get to, to work with that. And it's fantastic how in a nine personal year, I always will say when you're in the flow of it, it's a year where dreams can come mm -hmm. true. Because often our dreams come true when we allow them to. And what I mean by that is, is as, as silly as it may sound, and no duh, but we all have this propensity to go, I want my life to change. I want to make more money. I want to have a relationship. I want to do that. But I don't want to change anything about what I'm doing. Exactly. <laughs> right? Yes. I just want yes. it all to knock on my door, mm -hmm. come in here. And because mm -hmm. we don't want to do what it takes to actually pivot in order to create those mm -hmm. things. And so think, I think of the nine personal year that way. It is more a time of releasing and pivoting so that you can allow in what you actually want. So it's a year where dreams can come true if you are open to that. And yet attached to that is going to be some things that fall away. Oh, yeah. Period. And the flip side to that. So yes, there were great things like my mom and I did an incredible road trip to Maryland. My big thing is I've been a Hallmark girl forever and ever. Hallmark literally saved my life in 2016 when I lost my very first fur baby who was my everything, like just my child. And it, Hallmark pulled me through. And I'm a Hallmark lover. I watch it. I love the movies. They just, it makes life better. There was a Hallmark event a few weeks back. And it was over in West Palm. And I remember it was this big weekend. And I was like, oh, I don't know that I want to do that. And I thought, randomly, I, call, I go, hey, mom. I go, you just want to take a drive over? I don't know what this is about, but let's just go check it out. So we go over. It turns out to be like the most amazing freaking experience we've ever had. I went in with zero expectations. I met the writers, the producers, the actors, the actresses. I've, they're so kind. First of all, so flipping kind. I just was... It was just spe speechless. And it was such an incredible opportunity to meet people that I never thought. Here I am just sitting on the couch watching Hallmark. And the next thing I know, I'm, it's like hugging and kissing on like all of these guys from Hallmark. And you're like, this is a great freaking day. Way to go, number nine year. Now let's bring it home. <laughs> exactly. So you go from something so crazy and so what? And then the next thing you're in the arms of a Hallmark, Hallmark hunk. And you're like, thank you, God. Thank you. And it was so cool. And, and the blessing is they were all so amazing. And, and they're all coming on the show to share their stories now. And now we're all friends. And it's it was just, it was a beautiful experience. But yeah, nine, I don't think I would, I guess you'd fear it again. But ready, I'll handle it differently in another nine years. But well, we have to be really careful. That's one of the things that I attempt to be really mindful about in my practice. Because you uh, often people want to know the most devastating that right. could that are possible and and the other things with that and yet it has a lot of power and we know how powerful our minds are in time in terms of manifesting mm -hmm. whatever we think about and so for me looking at the nine personal year I really look at it more like a graduation 
like it's commencement time. Mm -hmm. And so you're marching through that last semester, right? And you're getting mm -hmm. up and you're taking the test and you're going to class and you're meeting your friends at the, uh, every Friday night at the bar that you've been doing the whole time that you've been in college. But you know that it, there, there's going to be some point, and for the nine personal year, it's the end of the year, where you walk across the stage, you get your diploma, and everyone disperses. Yeah. And it would be weird and freaky if you stayed in college forever. <laughs> it, it, right? it would. It just, it wouldn't work. <laughs> it so wouldn't it, work. We have to think yeah. about that in terms of our lives as we're meant to, if we're not growing and changing and transitioning, we're dying, we're atrophying. Oh. And so it's, who am I speaking to? A number five. You're like, I'm always, the five is always moving mm -hmm. forward, doing the what's next rather than yes. back in the day. Always have, what's next. I'll have my moments where I'll reminisce certain things. But sure. it's it, now it's about geographical places that I reminisce. It's not so much people or experiences. It's the geographical things. And mm -hmm. yeah, I find too now that I don't remember having fear in my younger years, I guess we call those. <laughs> I didn't think twice about driving cross country six times. That was just like, oh yeah, I'm going to move cross country because I can't. Mm -hmm. Now I'm all like, well, let me think about that for a minute. What's their weather? Do they have seasons? Is there a screen? Like it's so different as things should be. Not as scary, but you definitely look at things differently. And going back to the numerology, I always check. You've been incredibly great with the newsletters that you send out every month. And it just really helps in a grounding aspect to know where you're at and what's coming. And every month when I read those, and those aren't even just personal to me, those are just going out to all of your subscribers. It's so dead on and it's just amazing. I love astrology. I love numerology. I love it all. I love to just mix it all together and have a pretty little movie. It's so great. Yes, a smorgasbord. A smorgasbord of it all. And that's why I think that this is so important when we talk about the numerology with entrepreneurship and I think what an incredible time right now, this sort of, I don't even know if it's a crossroads. I'm not sure if we're at a cliff. I'm not quite sure where we're all at. I just know that we're at like somewhere or maybe a tip of a mountain looking out. And this is an incredible opportunity to pull everything together that you've been thinking about and then having validation via your name, via the business name, via what you want to do. Or like you're saying, like having two or three things and then looking at the numerology with Felicia and realizing, no, really, you're pulled this way. And sometimes all someone has to do to shine a light on something to go, oh, yeah, that is where my soul is. Yeah, is to actually put it into words and to validate it. I'm always into each number has very distinctive defining qualities and characteristics and to learn those basic tools when, whenever we see, whenever a number shows up to know that the one is about independence and leadership. The two is about love and, 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 to, and patience and diplomacy. And the three is about create self-expression, communication, all of those things. The four is, is demanding systems and processes and stability. The five is that freedom, always pushing the envelope. It's that catalytic energy, adventurousness sort of thing. The six is nurturing and um, and service and self-sacrifice often in many ways. The seven is very analytical and a spiritual seeker. The eight is that the power and money and authority. And the nine is that more universal wisdom, that compassionate humanitarian. So if you even have those few words to connect to each of the numbers, whenever they show up, you can really begin to read it to, to, make sense out of it just such a great I don't know it's shortcut <laughs> it's a complete it yeah. really is it's a complete shortcut when I read it I'm like oh it makes so much sense why I'm always like oh where can I live next what can I do next what what's next <laughs> yeah and that's a five. And the cool thing about it is that there's always going to be the balance point, right? There's always going to be that delicate balance with, with all of us in our life's path and how we're doing that. And yet I would say as a five, if you weren't adventurous, if you weren't someone who was like that, you would be the anti-five. You would be the fearful five, the one who can't make those decisions, who kind of hyperventilates thinking about packing their suitcase. And I've known fives like that yeah. and they're miserable. 
Yeah. I'm yeah. miserable. I don't, and they don't even, they don't even know the locus of it, but when they learn that their, their entire life's work is to express this, is to mm-hmm. be this catalytic force of nature. That is the five, that, that experiencer where the world is your oyster. And that's right? where, and I felt that the last two years, like when everything was locked yep. down, I felt that on a whole nother level because at first it was just like, whatever, you were just doing what you needed to do. But then I didn't realize how, let's just say, maybe a little down and out that I was because I wasn't re- I wasn't doing anything. I, I'll, I Even just to get in the car and go for a two-hour road trip, like from Scottsdale yeah. to Sedona, that's just a given. Like you have to do that. Little things like that. But those things weren't even happening. And yeah, I've definitely it was, felt that other it was- side. Exactly. It was rough on everyone mm-hmm. yet fives and people who have fives in their chart. It was super rough. And yet the beauty of it is if we think in a different way, which is it gave you this ab- this think tank to really engage with the highest or elements of the five, which is freedom through self-discipline. It is the con- that constructive use of freedom, and it's also on its highest level, finding freedom of mind under all circumstances. How do you find your freedom in re- within restrictive circumstances when you're confined, when you're tethered, when you don't have freedom of movement? When you yeah. don't have your sovereignty, if you're going to learn it, you're going to, it's like two, for instance, life path is the conflict avoidant one and the diplomat and the mediator. And so the cruel joke is that they're always in conflict and they're always having inviting con- con- conflicting situations because they're learning how to be a mediator. You don't go to law school and learn how to litigate and mediate by talking to yourself. You don't. Valid you, point. You have to get in and you've got to go up against it. And so when we start looking at our experiences differently, it really, boy, is it a release. Wow. That was my upper, that was my PhD opportunity to learn these things Mm -hmm. and to put it into practice. Right. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I think the other thing that I do want to express to people, because I don't want, and I know someone out there is, I don't know if I want to find out my number. What if it's bad? What if like it's Jennifer bad? was afraid of her number nine year. But here's the thing. If I would not have known about my number nine year, everything just would have seemed like a shit storm, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. A complete shit storm. It's like knowing when a Mercury retrograde is coming, then you're not as upset when your computer blinks because you're like, oh, mm-hmm. Mercury's in retrograde, not a big deal. Right. Finding out your numerology, be it through your name or through your business, because Felicia and Felicia does compatibility. We've done all that. We've done numerous episodes. If you go back and look through all of them, we've done it. We've done almost everything, I think, but I'm sure there's plenty more we could do. There's so many ways to use numerology for the positive in your life and to help you move forward. There's nothing bad about finding out who you are. There's only empowerment to be had. And when you can get it so decisive through numerology it's just so amazing it's so empowering it is and it's funny that I think about also what you're what you're talking about with your nine personal year it's like you're in Florida right now would you would you want to know if there was a hurricane warning Yes. You probably would <laughs> yes. so that you could prepare. Right. 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 You're yes. like, okay, it's a hurricane. I know it'll blow by mm-hmm. everything else, but I'd like to prepare. Same thing with the mm-hmm. numerology. It's exactly, it's like your nine personal year just says there's a little bit of volatility coming, a little bit of turbulence, put on your seatbelt and, yeah. uh, and let's ride and through ride it. it out. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. totally ride it through. I do want to touch on one thing. So numerology, when you're doing your sessions, your readings, your coachings, it traditionally goes January to January. Is that correct? In terms of personal year? Yes. Yes. I Okay. Good question. Because mm-hmm. here's the thing, just like in every ology, anything else, any other thing in the, in, in the universe, there are different schools of thought mm-hmm. <laughs> about how things operate, right? So the two basic schools of thought with the personal year are that it, it ignites on January 1st and completes officially on December 31st. So it's the calendar year. 
That's the way I do it. I think that it, the personal year energy intensifies around your birthday and then also has a peak in September. So that would be a whole other conversation. Right. But uh, also suffice to say that there are people in numerology who uh, believe or feel that the personal year goes from birthday to birthday rather than year to year. I've looked at it both ways and I feel honestly like everything else, it depends on how it feels to you. How does it feel to you? Yeah, Yeah. I really felt quite a break around my birthday. And then, yeah, yeah, but like we had talked in previous episodes about this, when you are very in tune with yourself and or an intuitive or an empath, like I happen to be, generally you had said you'll start to pull things in a little differently, maybe a little early, maybe things will shift a little bit differently. And so I really felt that. I also Mm -hmm. look at it as, and even now there's this hurry up energy that I have And I'm like, well, that's a lot. But anyhow, but then I think that there's this think tank that's coming for the remainder of the year, which will be fine tuning all of this new things that I'm implementing within the podcast and in the business and all of that kind of jazz. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the next year is really more of the open door, the new chapter, the really getting those seeds planted very definitively Mm -hmm. next year. And also remember that it's the last year of this three-year transition cycle that you're in the middle of right now. So I, I feel that the eight personal year is the beginning of a three-year kind of push time because the eight is about money and finances and personal power and empowerment. And it's going to, it's going to be boot camp. And then the nine year is letting go that transition. And then the one is resituating, reinventing and starting a new chapter. And so it's a pretty intense three years. Mm. Let's just put it that way. I'd say, yeah. (laughs) Mm. Yeah, I'd say. You're like, tell me something I don't know. But I'm really excited for it. Other people might go, wow, that sounds like a lot. But when you're in the middle of it and you're in the flow of whatever your zone of genius is, whatever your soul centered purpose is, it doesn't feel like work. Like you just go and you go and you're doing things. And when you fight things, that's when things get hard and things fall apart. But when you just go with the flow, if someone's knocking at your door, go answer it. It's not, it's, it doesn't have to be difficult, but you can make it difficult, especially when you're trying to hold on to control when you feel like maybe you don't have any. And that's also a good place I always say to check in on. Because that's another place to, you can block that. You can block everything that's meant for you that's in your heart. You can block or put on a standstill for a moment. And especially if it's not showing up exactly the way you think it should. Oh, yeah. And yeah, it's that silly thing of a silly just metaphor or example. You say, I want blue. I want the color blue. And you walk along and yellow comes up and yellow comes up and yellow comes up. You're like, see, the universe isn't responding to me. I'm not getting anything I want. This is yellow. It's not blue. I ask for blue. And then the next day you go along and you, and green shows up green. And you're like, see, Mm -hmm. I've keep asking for blue. All I'm getting is green. And then the other day I got yellow. And then what you begin to realize is that green and yellow in combination Mm -hmm. make blue. Right. So you have to go, oh, let me set out something in that field of intention and then be absolutely open to it showing up in so many phenomenal ways that I can't even imagine. Love that. Yes. Yes. I'm always encouraging people and myself to do that, that you just, you don't. We all have to remind ourselves. Do. Yeah. We have to keep ourselves in check. And we're, we're trained to think that way. And so it's, we have to un, untrain ourselves a lot of times. Absolutely. Yep. Well, Felicia, this has been so much fun. I always love having you on. It's, you're always a wealth of information. Please share with our listeners, where can they get in touch with you? Find out more about your up, upcoming course that you have and your books and all that good jazz. Absolutely. The portal for all things for the numerology curious would be FeliciaBender.com. Just you've got monthly free monthly forecasts there. You can get a numerology chart, those sorts of things. Find out about your life path number. And uh, I'm offering the eight week intensive numerology for entrepreneurs that start in the first week of September. 
And then I'm also going to be launching a certification program for numerology as well. That will be something we'll talk about another time, but probably in the beginning of October, level one of that program will be opening up. Ooh, I'm so excited to find out more about this. Yay. Exciting. Yeah. I'm excited. Cool. Thank you. And all of Felicia's contact information and her links will be over at jenniferpilates.com. Thank you, Felicia, again, for being here today. You are just amazing. Thank you for sharing your energies and all of your thoughtfulness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. All right. As we say, until next time. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe to Empowered Within with Jennifer Pilates. Your feedback is important. It helps me to connect with you and gives me insight into who you are and what you're enjoying about the show. For today's show notes and discount codes from today's sponsors, head over to jenniferpilates.com. Until next time, may you live an empowered life from within.